golden bow. Sentenced to live in death. Calling Godwin a scion of the golden bow is not just a poetic way of confirming his golden lineage. This line is filled with a lot of surprising nuance and meaning, and could even shed some light on what could happen in the DLC, assuming it happens in some type of spirit world. The phrase is a subtle nod to the Aeneid, where in order to travel the underworld, Aeneas must pluck a golden bough off a tree. That lets him book passage with Charon, the ferryman of the dead, and then later allows Aeneas to enter the Elysian Fields, imagery that the game also uses. Oh, and Virgil compared the Golden Bow to Mistletoe, so this makes the video a holiday special. But calling Godwin a scion of the Golden Bow is also a clear allusion to the book The Golden Bow, first published by the Scottish armchair anthropologist Sir James Frazier in 1890. The Golden Bow focused on the concepts of the dying god king and ritualistic regicide. The Golden Bough has been immensely influential and inspired a wide variety of artists and thinkers, including H.P. Lovecraft, T.S. Eliot, Sigmund Freud, and Joseph Campbell. That said, it's important to note that as a work of anthropology, the Golden Bough has not aged well at all, and is rife with inaccuracies, casual racism, and a lack of modern-day academic rigor. If you possess an urge to become all-knowing, I've got links down below to the abridged version of the text as well as some of the more famous critiques of The Golden Bough, including by Ludwig Wittgenstein of all people. All that said, let's delve into The Golden Bough. Fraser identified several cultures where their custom of putting the divine king to death as soon as he shows signs of ill health or failing strength springs directly from their profound veneration for him and from their anxiety to preserve him. Their practice of regicide is the best proof they can give of the high regard in which they hold their kings. As Frazier saw it, across many different cultures, the health of the god king was linked to the health and prosperity of the kingdom. With the decay of the man god, the land would also fall into decay. The man god must be killed as soon as he shows symptoms that his powers are beginning to fail, and his soul must be transferred to a vigorous successor before it has been seriously impaired by the threatened decay. The killing of the god, that is, of his human incarnation, is therefore merely a necessary step to his revival or resurrection in a better form. In other words, if a land failed to kill their king in time, dying of disease, his soul would necessarily leave his body in the last stage of weakness and exhaustion and so enfeebled it would continue to drag out a languid, inert existence in any body to which it might be transferred. And in the lands between, Godwin is a vivid illustration of what happens when a god king is not properly killed. On the night of the Black Knives, Godwin perished in soul alone, letting his physical body corrupt the lands between. Thanks to the rune of death, Godwin being buried at the roots of the Ur tree became a vector to spread death root. So with all of this in mind, I think the original intention behind killing Godwin was to transfer his soul to a new body, only for this ritual to be hijacked and sabotaged by Ronnie and the Black Knife assassins. One thing that's always stuck in my mind is this dialogue from the finger reader. Oh, my poor sweet lordling should have died a true death. As the first of the demigods to die. As a martyr to destined death. To me, this heavily implies that Godwin died in a different way than was anticipated. We don't know exactly what would have happened if the curse mark had been fully carved into Godwin. As the curse mark tells us, it should have taken the form of a circle. So I don't think breaking it into two pieces, what happened to Vani and Godwin the Golden, was necessarily the original intention behind the curse mark of death. I'll also point out that the completed curse mark is different from the mending rune of the Death Prince, since the latter had to be gestated by fear. What's also intriguing is that in the lands between, a person's mind seems to be separate from their soul. I'm basing this on the twinned set, which tells us that the D-twins are of two bodies and two minds, one single soul. So while Godwin is soulless, that doesn't necessarily mean he is brain dead. 
and since we can enter his dream, I think he still has some level of mental activity, which makes his current fate even more tragic. Now if the idea was to transfer Godwin's soul to escape his body, that raises the question, what was happening with Godwin? I think Godwin was infected with death blight before the Night of the Black Knives, and he may even be the patient zero for this disease. For starters, all of Merica's children that we know about were born with some type of affliction, whether it's having omen horns, eternal childhood, or the Scarlet Rot. So it always seemed a bit odd to me that Godwin was somehow born completely unscathed. As we also see from Roger's questline, death blight accumulates slowly, so there would be time to try to come up with a plan to fight Godwin's disease. We also never get a clear glimpse of Godwin below the waist. What's more, Godwin is also known as the First of the Dead, the same title given to Grave Lord Nito, who was linked with miasma, disease, and being toxic. As for how he got this affliction, what makes the most sense to me would be meddling from the outer god of the death birds, since those can inflict death blight. We also know from the golden epitaph and castle soul that Mikola tried to give Godwin a proper death and to revive him. And through Mikola's unalloyed golden needles, we find out that he was already trying to counteract the outer gods of rot and the frenzied flame. So I could easily see Mikola fighting against yet another outer god to help his brother. Thank you so much for watching. I'd love to hear what Yens think, so uh, let me know down below. I'd also like to thank everyone who supported me on Patreon or through YouTube memberships.